Good morning. Welcome to C3. It's great to see you all here and in line. Please join us as we worship together.
Awesome. I don't know about you, but that music makes me want to dance a little bit. So good thing I'm not going to dance, though. I don't have a lot of rhythm. But hey, C3 Students does a fantastic job of helping connect our students to Christ. And that's our mission statement here at C3 is connecting our community uh, to Christ. And every month we've been highlighting a different ministry that does that. And the month of November has been the C3 Student Ministry. And they have had a fantastic year and a fantastic month uh, you could tell by uh, Joseph Farmer's uh, turkey hat there uh, that they just recently had their friends giving, and it was just fantastic to see them uh, being able to connect with each other, to be able to connect with the leaders uh, as the leaders earn the right to be able to share with them the good news of Jesus. And we've seen many of them take uh, some fantastic steps uh, in their faith with Jesus this year. And so if you're interested in learning more about how you can connect with C3 students, if you are a, a kid, in sixth grade through 12th grade. Um, come on Tuesday nights, uh, there's a table right out in uh, the atrium where uh, Jay Hyam will be uh, to be able to uh, learn a little bit more. Or perhaps you're interested in serving as a mentor or being able to help in more of a behind the scenes way, or just knowing how you can pray uh, for the C3 student ministry. Uh, we hope that this month was a way for you uh, to learn a little bit more about them and to be able uh, to uh, know how to pray for them and support them as we finish up this year and as we move into next year. We're really proud of uh, Jay Hyam and his team and all the hard work they do uh, for our C3 students. Hey, if you are a guest, uh, I want to introduce myself. My name is Adam Mick. I'm one of the pastors here at C3, and we're so thankful uh, that you chose to join with us today. Those of you who are watching online, thank you so much. If you live local, join us next week. There's nothing like joining uh, one another and worshiping God in person. And so please join us next week at 10 a.m. here in person. Uh, but thank you for joining us online. If you are a guest, uh, we ask that you take a second and you grab one of these uh, yellow cards that's in the seat pocket in front of you and fill it out. And after the service, you can drop it off at the Welcome Center. If you're uh, shy, uh, you can drop it off in the uh, offering plate that's going to be passed a little bit later as well. Uh, when you do drop it off at the Welcome Center, uh, we have a, a small gift just as a token of appreciation and also a little bit of information about who C3 is so that you can learn a little bit more. Well, when you came in today, you may have noticed that uh, this entire church has been transformed into a winter wonderland because it is officially Christmas season. And so some people have been celebrating for weeks or months. Once you get past Thanksgiving, you can officially begin to celebrate uh, Christmas. At least that's my rule. But the place looks fantastic. And there's all kinds of ministries and opportunities uh, for us to be able to connect with each other and to connect with God uh, during this Christmas season. Uh, the first one I want to mention is the Ladies' Tea that's coming up on December 10th. Uh, there's a fantastic speaker. She's pretty good looking, too. Um, happens to be my wife. Uh, and not only is she good looking, but she's a better speaker than I am. I've already had a sneak peek at her talk, and it is fantastic. You're not going to want to miss uh, the Ladies' Tea. Uh, the Women's Ministry does a fantastic job every single year. And this is an opportunity to invite uh, women from the community who aren't connected to the church. And so... Uh, if you haven't signed up and registered for that, please do. We also need some help. I see that those lists uh, right outside of the atrium of all the opportunities to help are starting to get filled up. Thank you so much. Uh, but if you can serve before or after or during the ladies' tea, it would be greatly uh, appreciated. On December 11th, we're going to be going to the soup kitchen. Uh, it's been a few years since we've done this, but we have done it every year for maybe five or six years prior and it's one of my favorite Sundays of the year. Right when church ends, we're going to go uh, to the soup kitchen, and we're going to not only serve uh, some of those that are in need in our community, but get to sit and eat and, and join them in a meal and in conversation, be blessed by them, and be able to show them the love of Jesus as well. And so if you and your family want to join us, please sign up for that. That's out in the atrium as well. Uh, if you can't come but you want to give, uh, you can also make a dessert. Uh, that's the only part we have to come up with as far as food is concerned. Uh, and so uh, please consider making a dessert. And if you can't come, bring it on that Sunday morning and we'll take it down uh, for you. And, and then uh, the winter shelter uh, that helps uh, those that are uh, without homes uh, here in our community, helps them to stay warm at night and gives them a place. We're going to be uh, doing a, a neat thing on Thursday uh, December 15th, where we're going to have some food trucks right out here uh, in the parking lot. 
And so we want you to come and stuff the truck. Uh, last year we had a big van and we packed it full of sleeping bags and winter coats and socks and gloves. And we want to do that again to be able to help our community uh, in a really tangible and practical way. And while you're here, uh, enjoy uh, some food. You can stuff your belly and you can stuff your truck, stuff the truck to be able to help those in need. And so consider coming uh, on that Thursday, December the 15th. Uh, and then uh, there's a couple of opportunities for you to be able to help with the angel trees as well. One is for the soup kitchen, just for kids. When you go out there, you're going to see three different colors. We have uh, green, uh, which is one gift. It gives us whether uh, they're a male or female, their age, and then their specific request. A lot of these gifts are 10 or $15. Some are a little bit more, but you can pick the one that you would like uh, you and your family to be able to sponsor. Uh, there's a yellow card, which is more for the teenagers. Those are gift cards. If you want to buy them a gift card, uh, 25 to $50, uh, it would be greatly appreciated. And then there is a red card, and that's their entire Christmas. There's two or three gifts. Uh, there's sizes for boots or shoes and, and some winter clothes. And so that's a little bit more expensive. Uh, but a lot of times community groups or a couple of families pitch in to be able uh, to support in that way. And we'll need all the, all the stuff back on that Sunday, December uh, 17th, I believe it is, whatever the Sunday is, right before Christmas, unwrapped in a black bag with the bulb, and then uh, we'll take it down to the soup kitchen, and that week, and the parents will pick it up, and it'll be from the parents. It's just a way for us to be able to help some families uh, that are in need. I don't know about you, but that's exciting, isn't it? Uh, to be able to help uh, that feed people, to be able to help give, them, give their kids gifts, uh, to be able to invite people to great events like the Ladies' Tea. And guys, we have an event coming up uh, this upcoming Thursday night, Top Golf. Uh, we're going to uh, meet here at 6 o'clock. We're going to drive to Bridgeville, and we're going to have some food and some drink and some fellowship. Uh, and some really bad golf shots are going to happen uh, this Thursday night. Uh, but good conversations and a great opportunity for us to connect. And so uh, please sign up for that today, if at all possible. Uh, $20, it costs a little bit more than that. We'll cover the rest. Um, but I'm excited uh, for this Thursday night, and we hope that you'll be able to join us as well. Well, today, Pastor Ted's going to be kicking off our uh, Christmas series leading up to Christmas. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be great. Uh, Jan and her team might start introducing one Christmas song a week or so as we get a little bit closer. And then Christmas Eve will be here before you know it. We have three Christmas Eve services, one on Friday, two on Saturday. When you go out into the atrium, you're going to see a photo booth that uh, Jay Adams has put together. It looks fantastic. And we have a sign that says, you're invited. Take a picture of yourself and post it on social media. Maybe do that every single week um, and invite people to one of our Christmas Eve services. People are looking for a place to go on Christmas Eve. And if your friends see uh, every single Sunday leading up to Christmas that you're inviting them and you put the time that you're going to, the service that you're going to come and you invite them to come and sit with you, what a simple way uh, to be able to invite somebody. So consider doing that as well. Before we get into Ted's message, let me pray for the service, and we'll continue on uh, worshiping God. God, we do thank you uh, for Thanksgiving. Uh, we thank you uh, that uh, we have an opportunity, not just on Thanksgiving, but every day, uh, to pause and to be grateful uh, for all the things that you have blessed us with. Uh, even during difficult seasons uh, where uh, things may not always be going as we would want or desire, uh, we always have something to, to say thank you for. And, and we just want to say thank you for uh, giving us your son, Jesus. Uh, thank you for uh, the promises that you give us in Scripture, that you will never leave us or forsake us. Thank you for giving us a church family where we can gather and we can connect with people on a deeper level and we can uh, worship you and, and hear from your word and, and be reminded of, of who we are because of Jesus and uh, how we can best represent you uh, to our community, not just in the church events and programs, but in our day-to-day -day lives. And so, God, thank you for this time uh, to be able to sing, to be able to give, uh, to be able to hear from you, and then to be able to go out and live out the things that you want us to do in response to the message today. Bless this service, and may your name be lifted on high. It's in Jesus' beautiful name we pray. Amen.
as we worship you. Lord, I pray that as we begin this Christmas season, that we would be able to stay focused on who you are and how much you love us, Lord. Allow us to take the time to focus on how much you love us and how we can be in your presence in all that we face, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that you would bring more of your peace in all the things that are surrounding us, all the things that are distracting us. And Lord, I pray that as we give these gifts, that you would use them for your purposes to change lives. In Jesus' name. Shepherd 
Good morning, everybody. Merry Christmas. If your lottery number is 8331, you have won our big prize, which is your child waiting at, uh, in our C3 Kids Check area. So check your numbers and uh, let me know if you're the big cash prize winner. Well, beyond that, um, we are in our Christmas Advent season here. Uh, the four Sundays leading up to Christmas Uh, We like to do a special series just reminding us about the importance of this Christmas holiday. And this series is going to be entitled God With Us. And and that may be something that you associate with Christmas, um, and it it may come in a Christmas card, uh, at least the verses in the Bible that talk about this concept of connecting the birth of Jesus to God being uh, with us. And, and if you're not familiar with it, let me just show you those verses, and then I really want us to talk a little bit about what does it mean for God to be with us. So the verses in question are, come from the book of Matthew, Matthew's story about Jesus' birth, and uh, this, is, this is how they read. Matthew 1, 18 begins like this. Now, the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they had come together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And all of this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. And this is what was said. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call His name, Emmanuel, and then Matthew inserts this little phrase to make sure we understand, which means God with us. So here it is predicted uh, that through the miraculous birth of Jesus, um, God is introducing himself into the world, and that Jesus is will, is going to be called Emmanuel. Not literally, that you know, Jesus isn't you know, this isn't going to be his his literal name. His name is Jesus. But just like some of you may have had a, a, a nickname growing up, you know, maybe you know somebody you you did something. Uh, it, could be good, could be embarrassing, right? And, and they, they give you a name because you represented that thing perfectly well. Maybe you were super tall and they called you thin, you know, slim or you were really, really short and they called you something worse than, than that. Whatever it was, you represented that concept. You made it known so well that you were then called that name. And that is what Matthew is trying to communicate to us, that when Jesus walked this earth, people looked at him and the things that he was doing and the way that he was, and they had to pause and say, God is with us, which was a not, not, not amazing statement because they didn't believe in God. They all believed that, you know, God was out there and God, God was big and he was above us and beyond us and before us. And he was this great big God, but they couldn't imagine. They didn't realize that he could come and walk among us. And that is the thing that Jesus did so well that he earned him the nickname Emmanuel, that God could come all the way down and be with us. And I think no matter where you are here today, that concept of 
being with us is something all of us deeply desire. All of us need people to be with us, to connect with us, to have things close to us that are familiar and comforting, things that feel like home. Now, I know this is going to date me, but some of you, raise your hand if you've heard the concept of what is a whoopee. A whoopee. Now, this goes back to a great 80s movie, Mr. Mom, where um, Michael Keaton is a stay-at-home mom and, and his son has a, a blanket called his whoopee. Now, have you guess, if, how many people have seen Peanuts? Have you seen Peanuts? Charlie Brown, Linus's blanket. Are you with me with the whoopee concept here? So this is like a childhood object that, that you have to have, that, that, that you hold close to, that is always with you. Well, my wife, uh, Amy, uh, had a similar blanket uh, to that. It, it was her a whoopee. Uh, not that she necessarily carried it around with her everywhere that she went, but I do remember uh, that when we first got married, the, this blanket had to travel with us everywhere that we went. So when we first got married, uh, we packed up the U-Haul van and we headed down to Mississippi so that I could do some, some pastor training and the blanket came with us. And then when I was done with that training, uh, and we were packing to go to Pittsburgh. Uh, now we could no longer fit in a U-Haul. So it's like every time we moved, the vehicles got bigger. So then we had to get in a 15-passenger uh, budget truck, and the blanket had to come with us all the way to Pittsburgh. And then we moved down to Wheeling. And at this point, we purchased the, we had to rent the largest uh, truck that U-Haul. I felt, you know, I felt like a, an accomplished uh, CDL licensed driver by the time I was done with this thing. And we had to bring the blanket down uh, with us uh, to Wheeling as well. Now, more recently, we moved into our new home and the blanket, we were looking to get rid of some things. So we decided we had to make some cuts from the team. We had, we had to take some losses. So there was a, a service, actually, um, come on up here, I, don't, I won't make you give a sermon, that would take, thank you, love, would take the blanket and make it into a teddy bear doll. And so uh, the Wooby got to make it uh, and be with us in its new, more compact uh, form here. Uh, so this is, it doesn't have a name, does it? It has no name. Wooby. <laughs> Will be, jo- will be with us for the remainder of the sermon here. I'm going to leave him right there. Well, growing up, I didn't have, uh, I didn't have a, a, a whoopee, uh, but I do remember uh, desiring for someone to be uh, with me when I was alone. And I remember, especially at night, um, just as I, I laid there, and I think a lot of kids feel that way, you know, that they lay there and they think, you know, who can be with me? Uh, in this moment. And I, even from a young age, I would think a lot about God um, in kind of a very, I guess, basic sense. Because I looked at the world around me and, and how, um, how everything around me you know, had some kind of source. You know, it just, it, nothing came from nothing. And so as I, I laid in bed and I pondered uh, just the universe and my, my, my own um, frailty, I guess, at, at a young age, I just came to some conclusions about that there had to be a God out there, that, that we couldn't possibly all be alone, uh, but that there had to be a God who was um, before us in time, right? Because um, I, I, there was a time when I didn't exist, so he had to come before us. And I was pretty sure that this God, whoever he, uh, whoever he was had to be above us, you know, in a sense of just being more magnificent and, and holy and separate and amazing uh, than what I could see down here. And, and then that this God also had to be beyond us in that um, his time could have no end. And I just had this concept that, that this God was eternal before, above, and beyond us. But, but none of that brought me comfort to know that there was this great big God um, all around me before and above and beyond me. None of that actually brought me very much comfort because what I couldn't believe or couldn't fully understand or trust 
was that a God like that could really be with us. But now, when I consider the fact that God is present with me, I I receive a great deal of comfort. And I think what changed all of that for me is what we're going to talk today about concerning Christmas. That at Christmas, what we're going to discover is the God who is before us, above us, and beyond us in Jesus shows that he also can be present with us. And so I want to share a story um, from Jesus' life um, from John chapter 11. And it's not a story about his birth, but it's one of those stories uh, where people saw what Jesus did, and I believe they were forced to remark to themselves, wow, God is present with us, because here in this story, we're going to see Jesus uh, raising his friend Lazarus from the dead. And in fact, this is one of those stories where I think a lot of us can resonate with our own desire uh, that we all want to have someone with us, because in moments like this in the story, where Lazarus is sick, or when people, um, when we're losing people in our lives, those are the moments where we just want someone to be with us, just someone to hold our hand, just to sit there and, you know, brush our hair back and just to be present with us, that those are the moments that our hearts long for someone to be there. And so I think this is a great story for us to discover how Jesus can be with us because of what Christmas reveals about who he is. So we're going to dive right in to John uh, chapter um, 11 and just see how the story begins and then how uh, Jesus is, who Jesus is revealed to be throughout the story. So John chapter 11, verse 1 begins like this. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany the village of Mary and her sister Martha. It was Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent to him, meaning Jesus, saying, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness is, does not lead to death, it is for the glory of God so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now, something that might be confusing from this initial statement is we hear Jesus saying that this illness isn't going to lead to death, and we we might suppose from that uh, that he immediately is going to go to Lazarus uh, uh, as he's sick, heal him, and and everything's going to be fine. But that's not actually what happens in the story. Um, Jesus doesn't get there in time. Lazarus does, in fact, die. But that is what Jesus is hinting at in this statement, that Jesus already knows what has been planned for this moment. And the plan from his father is that Lazarus is going to pass away. Jesus is going to show up four days later, raise Lazarus from the grave, and through that, Jesus is going to be glorified, meaning that through what happens in this event, people are going to look at Jesus and say, wow, God is with us. But all I want you to recognize at this point is that Jesus, through his statement, already knows what is going to happen. There's a spoiler alert. Lazarus is going to get raised from the dead. And so the story continues. Jesus eventually comes and uh, finds Mary and Martha after Lazarus has passed away. And this is what we read happening. John 11, verse 20. So when Martha learned that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him. And Mary remained seated in the house. And Martha said to Jesus, Lord 
If you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. And Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he'll rise in the resurrection on the last day. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? And she said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God who is coming into the world. Now, here we see some really clear statements about how in Jesus, God is with us. Even Martha's little phrase at the end there, you're the son of God coming into the world. Where is he coming from? <laughs> you know, Where did Jesus come from? Well, he came from his father to come to, and be born and to be God with us. That is the whole point of this little interchange between uh, Martha and Jesus, because Martha has some vague concepts about who God is. You know, he's a God who's out there, and, he, and he's, he's going to do something good at the last day. But Jesus isn't content with her having some just vague notion about who God is he takes a moment in this conversation and kind of, kind of directs her gaze right at his face and says, no, 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 Martha, you're looking here and there and all these distant places, but Martha, I'm, I'm the resurrection and the life. You need to be looking to me. And even that little phrase there, I am the life, is Jesus indicating that, that just as I, you know, laid on my, on, on my bed as a kid and, you know, thought about, you know, you know, if nothing comes from nothing, where can everything come from? Jesus is, is saying he's the I am. He's the, he's the pre-existing one. He's the one who comes before us and is above us and is definitely beyond us in our comprehension. He is that God. And yet, Martha and Mary are looking for something else. You know, they're, they're looking for someone to be, who would be with them in that moment, who, who is a God who is more than just one who came before them and who lives above them and is going to exist beyond them. They want a God who can actually be present with them, who can be all those things, and who can live with them in this tragic moment. And that's who Jesus is going to show himself to be. Verse 32 to 35. Now when Mary, that's the other sister, came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet, saying to him, Notice this repeat concept. Lord, if you had been here with us, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit and greatly troubled. And he said, where have you laid him? And they said to him, Lord, come and see. And Jesus wept. Notice in these verses how much we get to see is going on internally inside of Jesus. It says that he was moved, that he was troubled. And then in the shortest verse in all of the Bible, it says that he wept, showing to us 
that the miracle we see at the birth of Jesus is God coming all the way down and adopting a, a, a human nature just like ours, to be, to be just like us, to have a body and a soul and emotions and feelings and a mind. You know, that, that Jesus, in Jesus, we don't see God just kind of dipping his toe into humanity. You know, he, he, he's, just not, he's just not kind of skipping along um, in our moments, in our suffering. He's coming all the way down to experience life from down below, just like we experience it. He is, as as the old confession says, both very God of God and very man. He is God with us. And even in this smallest verse, in this teardrop of Jesus, I think we see all of this coming together. Because, spoiler word, Jesus already knows, as I mentioned, that Lazarus is going to be okay. He knows that he's going to be. Later on that day, Lazarus and Jesus, they're going to have a sandwich together. Like, it's going to be all right. And even though Jesus already knows that it's going to be all right, he's still willing to come and to cry with them. That his knowledge about how everything is going to be okay doesn't prohibit him from entering in to the minutia, the details, the pains, and the hurts that every individual moment brings into their lives. That in Jesus... Even though he is the great I am, limitless beyond what we can imagine, that in Jesus, God's limitlessness does not limit him from experiencing the moments in life that you are going through. Jesus wept, even though he would be the one who in just a moment would raise Lazarus from the dead. That the God who is before us and above us and beyond us can truly enter into our moments and be present with us. Experiencing things that we experience, understanding who we are, maybe even better than we understand ourselves. That is the miracle of Christmas. That when we say that God is with us in this season, we're not just saying some kind of blanket theological statement that like God's present in all time, in all places. This isn't just some vague blanket statement about God's omnipresence in all these moments. It isn't just some uh, vague hope uh, that God from his retirement home on Mount Olympus has a really good pair of like binoculars and so that he can look down on us and see our moments. That's not what this statement is saying. He's not somewhere far off. He's living there in the moments with us. He's, he's face to face with us in those moments, just like he's face to face with Mary and Martha, and he's willing to look in their faces and see their tears and allow their tears to become his tears, because that is what it means to be present with someone. When you allow their moment in time, their experience of that moment, the pain of it, the joy of it, the fear of it, the excitement of it, and you allow their moment of life to become your moment in life, that is when you are present with someone. And that is what Jesus is showing us in his tears. You see, being with people is a concept that has a big spectrum on it. You know, there's a shallow end of the pool and there's a deep end of the pool. And you've all probably experienced this with different people in your life. 
you know, in the shallow end of the pool of being with someone, you might know somebody who, um, you know, they know you're going through a hard time and they, they send you a text, right? That's fine. And then going a little deeper into those moments, uh, maybe, um, maybe they show up and are physically there with you and kind of give you a, an awkward pat on the back and, and they're, they're with you. And some of you know people in your life who are right there with you, sticking it out with you. They're, they're, you can't shake them even if you wanted to. They're on you like your shadow and they experience life right along a side of you because they are with you. And that is what God in Jesus is offering to us when we believe in him, this God who is, who is magnificent, he's before us and above, above us and beyond us, can actually come and be with you in Christ to experience all of life by your side. At Christmas, we are challenged as a church to experience the withiness of God at Christmas and, and, and to go into a place where we know that he is there with us, that, that through Jesus, God is with us in our thoughts and he's with us in our fears and he's with us in the darkness and he's with us in the confusion and he's with us in our mess and he's with us in our weakness and he's with us in our brokenness and in our loneliness and in our death. At Christmas, we see a God who, even though he's before us in all time, is willing to come and enter our time with us. At Christmas, we see a God who, though he is holy and above us, is willing to place upon his back our sin and our shame and our brokenness and carry that to the cross. And at Christmas, we see a God who is beyond us, beyond all time, beyond our galaxy, who is preparing a place for us, who's willing to whisper back to us who are still struggling and going through it, that I will be with you even to the end of of the age. My spirit is present with you in these moments. You are not an orphan. You are not alone. That is who we see on display at Christmas. Emmanuel, God with us. Someone who is there with us in the midst of the struggle. And it is a struggle to know that God is present with us in all of those moments. Mary and Martha show us that that very struggle of just going through difficult experiences and, and believing and trusting that God is present with those In those moments, we will face those same struggles as well. So let me encourage you, as we kick off this series, to enact some practices, some next steps in our lives that will allow us throughout this Advent season to be a people who are growing in our understanding of what it means for God to be present with us. First thing I'll recommend um, is... Um, if you don't have a reading plan currently, grab a Bible and, and read some of these verses that describe this event of Christmas. Um, a great one is John chapter 1, verses 1 to 11, that describes who Jesus is as this word who was with God before all time, coming down and living with this. Take time throughout this week, read those verses, and allow this understanding of a God who would come all the way down and be present uh, to kind of fill your mind and soul throughout this week. The second thing I'll recommend is that as you're going through your week, as things get difficult, scary, uh, confused, rushed, busy, pause and repeat to yourself that God is with us. See if that 
small and yet powerful phrase backed up with with what you've heard today and what you'll read in John chapter 1. See if that doesn't help you navigate life instead of out of the the fear of, uh, of being alone that typically haunts most of our lives. See if it doesn't empower you to walk with Christ in that moment that you are experiencing, to pause and say, God is present with us. So practice that this week um, as you continue to grow in our understanding of what God desires us to know at Christmas. Well, God is present with us. I think all of us want someone there to be there with us. We all desire to be known. But life makes us feel like we're isolated. We go through experiences. We we have thoughts inside of our heads that make us feel alone. We wonder if anybody can ever truly know who we are. And part of that is true. I mean, there are parts of, of who we are that maybe even we don't even fully understand about who we are. And, and they make us feel isolated and make us feel alone. But there is someone who can know you, someone who knows you even better than you know yourself. It is God, the one who has come before us and is above us and and lives beyond us, the one who is the great I am. This is the God who knows those inner thoughts even better than you do. But he's just not some far off deity gazing down from afar. He's one who has come to be present with us. The one whom we need is Jesus. Because Jesus and only him at Christmas time shows us that this God who is before and above and beyond us can truly come to be with us. Let's pray. Father, thank you that you are present with us, that your desire here is for us to leave here with a sense of your ongoing walk with every single one of us through the events of our day and our lives, through our feelings and our hurts, through our senses of being alone and being lost that you can be there in those moments. And I pray that even though we're all here in this place, um, I know that individually many people here are in different places with you and different places with how they're feeling, but that you could come and connect with each one where we are presently and that through your power of your spirit, you might allow them to take a step forward with you, a step of faith so that you can connect more deeply with them in the moment that they're experiencing in this moment of time. Please, please do that, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. If you're able, please stand. We
Thank you for joining us for our kickoff in our new Christmas series, God With Us. And one of the ways that we can be with one another is through prayer. After the service, we'll have some members of our prayer team up front. If you're going through a moment when you don't feel like anybody can know where you are, we would love the opportunity just to pray with you, just to ask for God to be present if, in whatever situation you're going through. Another option is to fill out one of these prayer cards. If you want to be in our prayer chain, you can click that on there. Take it to our welcome center on the way out, and we would love the opportunity to pray uh, with you through one of these cards as well. Also, if you filled out a yellow card, take that to Crystal at the, at the welcome center. Get your gift there. We'd like to get to know you a little bit better if you're new here, so please take a moment and fill out one of those cards. And uh, Ladies Tea is coming up in just a couple weeks, so Please, if you're, uh, if you're interested in going, um, take a moment, fill it out online. You can pay for your ticket and maybe uh, that of a guest through our online uh, registration system. It's going to be a great event, so please sign up for that. We would love to see you there at our ladies' tea. We we'll appreciate you uh, checking us out on this Christmas uh, kickoff series. All the other things that Adam mentioned are out the red tables out there. Be sure to check some of those out. Stick around, get to meet some people. We love to get to know you a little bit better. Thanks for joining us this Sunday here at C3. Hopefully see you next week.